Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, please invite your friends and just to inform you after we finish here we are going to go to the quality of life account and we will continue with different topic there in case you like to join us and maybe the admin can post uh, the link for the other account for those who like to join us. Um, I made videos about politics if you notice in a few days ago and I, some, I saw some uh, uh, comments from people who are supposedly Christians. <clears throat> and one of them, he insists that Jesus, when he said, uh, go and buy a sword, he meant something metaphorical. You know, I find such kind of people, they are not only not Christians, they are deceivers. For centuries, kings and priests they work together as mafia and they wanted you to be an arm even <clears throat> they made the church as a business for them to control the crowd the same as Islam it is a political uh, government a gang of government using God and word of God to control the crowd so they will not dare to ask for their rights. And many until now, they use verses from the Bible to make you believe that you should obey always a king. It doesn't matter who is he because he is chosen by God. So they go and elect some verses. And those verses actually not, you know, they are not exist for that reason. As an example, John the Baptist, he paid his life opposing a king so who said we have and we are proud of him every single one of us is proud of him so who said that we have to obey kings if they are bad who said that where do you get this from the bible is against kings who they are unjust god is against kings who they are unjust so the people who follow god they obey god and they should be disobeying a king who is unjust when somebody come to you and say, Jesus, yes, Jesus says, go and buy a sword. And by the way, they try always not to quote those verses for us from the Bible. And you ask yourself, why? I mean, you go to the church, you'll find no priest, nowhere. He quote for us that Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. How come they don't quote, you know? They quote for us only, Jesus says, the one who hit you in your right cheek, give him the other one. This is the only quote. Christian, they hear 24 hours, 7 days a week. It looked like <clears throat> this is the only thing they want you to practice in Christianity. Christianity is just somebody hit you in your cheek, you give him the other one. Which is absolutely far from what Jesus meant. You know, every time have a law. And the law is different from time to time. Actually, until now there is some funny law exists in Texas where... Uh, a man laundry underwear cannot be put it next to a woman underwear in the same line. Funny, right? But this was a law for some time. So, in the time of Jesus, there was a law. If somebody hit you in a certain cheek, you go to jail. So Jesus saying there is law, there is a police, there is a government. We are not living in the wood. Use the law. Don't be violent. So what if the law itself is an aggression? What if the law itself is Hamas coming over to control us? What if the law is Taliban coming over to control us? What if the law is ISIS, the law we are talking about? You see, this is supposedly the law. For them, it's a state. For those terrorists, they are the law. And you are the outlaw. So what a Christian should do? Should he let ISIS slaughter him? Shall he allow Hamas capture him, slaughter him? Or he should defend himself against them. Well, based on those fake Christians, and I call them fake because they are coward and they are faking meaning in the Bible for agenda. You should not fight Hamas. You should not fight Hezbollah. You should not fight ISIS. 
you should not fight Al-Qaeda. If Al-Qaeda come to your house, just let them rape your wife. I mean, what's the problem? We are Christians. Is that really Jesus was said to us? Did Jesus say to you that a man, he can rape your wife and what you do, you stand next to him and you pray for him to finish fast? Or you defend your wife, whatever the defense needed? Those cowards, they are out of sense and out of logic, and they are no Christians. The Bible is full of verses about God giving his nation, his people, the right to defend themselves and to attack their enemies. From all the Bible, they choose one verse. Jesus says, if somebody go and hit your, your face, give him the other cheek. They forget the whole book. Well, isn't it the God of the Old Testament is the same God as the New Testament? Did we exchange God? What happened? For those cowards, they have an agenda and propaganda. And I will show you some of those propaganda. Again, take a note, please. After we finish here, we will go to the quality of life for those who like to join us. And the topic there, if life is full of misery, I mean, how you can enjoy it, how you enjoy it, life, it's full of misery. So this is the topic for today in the other account. So I hope the admin will post the link and you can join us after we finish here. Here, there's an article made by someone, and we don't care really for the name. This guy, to some Zionist Christians and Jews, the Bible says Jerusalem is Israel capital. So this guy, he want to prove to you that you are an idiot, and Jerusalem is not the capital of Israel. Look, look at this idiot. He just said the word Jerusalem. And now he want to convince us that Jerusalem is not belong to Israel. I mean, isn't it Jerusalem is a Hebrew word? If it's not a city belong to Israel, why you call it Jerusalem? Idiot. It's like saying to you, I want to convince you that the word Shalom does not mean peace and have nothing to do with the Hebrew. Wait, what? It's Shalom. Shalom, since when Shalom is not. So, the agenda is, they want to strip you from your rights and they want to make you easy target for your enemy. So, the Muhammadan, they come and they took Jerusalem. The Muhammadan, they come and they converted our churches and our temples as Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa, this is not a mosque. This is a Jewish temple and we should have it back. The same as Ayah Sophia, the filthy Erdogan, just yesterday he went there praying, taking it from us in the front of the whole world. And if you ask for it, they will say you are a Zionist. Islamophobic. They can take our churches, they can brag about it, they can recite Quran, praising Allah for staying in our churches, the whole world goes silence. But if you talk, they say you are seeking war and you are Islamophobic. If you are a Christian who support Israel, they call you Zionist. And by the way, just to show you how stupid they are, I mean, do you know that Zionist is not a bad word? Who said that Zionist is something bad? You idiot. As long as you are a person who knew the Bible, didn't you know where is the word Zionist coming from? Do you know even who is the one who called the Zionist Zionist? So you notice that those people, they have an agenda. And the agenda is to make you not to fight back the aggressive enemy who is coming to rape your wife, take your land, take your churches, take your temple. You see, if now we go and say we want to take Al Kaaba, the Kaaba, the pagan room for the Muslim Muhammadan, they will say, no, they cannot do that. This is not right. But okay, so they, 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 they took all our land. All the land they have under their feet right now, this is Netherlands. From Iraq to Syria to Jordan to Morocco to Egypt to, to, to Algeria, this is not their land. To 
Turkey itself is not exist. There's nothing it's called Turkey. This is Constantinia. A million and a half Armenian were slaughtered. Nobody says that those they have Christian Christophobia. Now we have Islamophobia. A million and a half Armenian they slaughter for very simple reason. They are Christians. And right now. 90% of Armenia is occupied by the filthy government of Turkey. Turkey is just a collection of land stolen from the, all the neighbors. From the Greek, from the Syrian, and when I say the Syrian, I mean the real Syrian, not the Muslims there. Those are occupation. The Muslims in Syria occupation, the Muslims in Iraq are occupation, the Muslims in Jordan occupation. Go and read history. They never been there. This is Syria. The language of Syria is Syriac, not Arabic. Is that telling you something? The language of Iraq is Aramaic, not Arabic. Is that telling you something? The language of Egypt is Egyptian, not Arabic. Is that telling you something? No, it doesn't tell you anything because you choose to be blind and choose to, to be stupid. So it does hurt him when they see someone saying, it is very right for a Christian or a Jew to be armed, not to be a criminal, but to defend himself. It hurt their feeling. And if you ask the guy who wrote this article, this filthy idiot, do you support having a police in your city? Maybe he is liberal. He would say, no, we do not need police. But when something happened, he would call the police. If we do not need arm, and the Bible says don't have arm, as they claim, well, then who is going to stop the criminal who comes to your house? The policeman, maybe he should hold a lipstick stick. If somebody came to your house and he want to rape your child or, or take your money, I'm sure he will, this guy who wrote this article, if somebody take from him a dollar in the street, he will die for the sake of his dollar. But he don't want you to take Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not valuable the same as his dollar. Do you want to be a chicken? Is that what you want? Do you think we will respect, anyone will respect, do you think a woman will respect a husband? He stand watching a man raping his wife? And what is the excuse? He will say, oh, Jesus says, if somebody hit you in the right cheek, give him the other one. Jesus never said that, you coward. He never said that a man can rape your wife. He never said a man can rape your children. He never said someone will take your house. Jesus said the one who live by the sword will die by the sword. That means that is justice. That means he shall be killed by the sword. That means justice is the one who kill by sword is to be killed by the sword. The one who live by the sword, live, live. He's a criminal. He live by it. We are Christians. We should not live by the sword. They say to you, when Peter, he defend Jesus, a policeman, he come to arrest him, he cut his ear. And Jesus, he rebuke him. Well, because he is cutting the ear of a soldier. But they will not ask themselves, why even Peter carrying a sword with him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus, before that moment, he did not see that Peter all the time is carrying a sword. Well, Peter is carrying a sword because Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. They said to him, we have two. He said, this is enough, which means enough to defend yourself. So when the soldiers, they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus, he rebuked and he refused that action. And he put the ear of the soldier who lost his ear by the sword back. Because simply, number one, he is waiting for them to be arrested. He even told them who will betray him, who will deny him. He knew what will happen exactly, and now Peter trying to stop it. He did not give him an order to do so. Number two, this guy is a soldier. He is just, he is not a criminal. He is an, a police of the government of Roman, which is established government in land, in the land 
400 of years. So why you are cutting the ear of the poor soldier? He is just doing orders. He is not coming in war. He is not an army of a foreign country. He is already. You know, when, when, the, when some of the Jews, some hypocrites, they say to Jesus, okay, uh, what about tax? Do you pay tax to Caesar? Trying to make Jesus look bad in front of the Jews, because if he say yes, then they will say, oh, see, he support Caesar. He is the occupation. If he say no, the Roman will arrest him. But Jesus, what he said to them, show me the coin in your hand. What, what do you have in your pocket? The coin in their hands have a picture of Caesar. Hypocrites. So he said to them, well, give what to Caesar to Caesar. You allow them to rule you. You allow them to, to, to use their coin. If you, don't, if you don't accept them to be your leaders, why you use their coins? Where's your coins? If you don't want to pay tax to Caesar, why well, you carry the money of Caesar? So be aware of false teachers, for they are there to deceive you. They don't want you to have Hagia Sophia back. Right now, Turkey is threatening Greece and Armenia to do genocide again. Shall we Christians ask Armenia and Greece to lay down their weapons so the Turkish Islamic army will slaughter them? Is that what Jesus said? Jesus will be happy to see millions of Armenian and Greek people slaughter women they are raped, the same as happened in Constantinia 600 years ago. Is that what Jesus said? Liars. Liars you will end in fire. Actually, if a war happened with Greece, and if the Greek people allow me to join their army, I will be honored. And God is my witness. I will be honored to die in Greece, defending the women and the children of Greece. A Christian is the one who defend against the unjust. Not someone, he pray for you to have just, that's not true, this is not, this is not Christianity. A Christian is someone, he give a sandwich for the hungry, not someone he pray for the hungry. Jesus said, I was a stranger and you took me in. I was hungry and you feeded me. I was naked and you clothed me. He did not say I was naked and you prayed for me. They want you to be nothing. Everyone, you see now the liberals, they are saying they want to take down Jesus. Well, go, go ahead, take down Jesus. Go, let us see. Go ahead. I mean, they became so aggressive to the point they are so rude and filthy because they learned that the Christians are very peaceful people. They don't even open their mouth. And if you open your mouth, the priest who is corrupt, the priest, he said, no, this is not a Christian. We cannot do that. No, we can do that. We can. You are a coward. You are a coward. Did you read the Bible? Or maybe you never have one, but you are a priest. Maybe you never heard of the Bible. Why you will hear about the Bible? You are here just to tell us, don't, uh, don't resist aggression. Let people occupy you. Let people take your land. This is your job as a priest. Coward, fake, and not biblical. We love peace, and the Lord, he blessed those who sponsor and spread peace on earth. But peace on earth cannot happen when the criminals are taken over. Somebody have to stop the criminals and the crime.
This is why we have police. Otherwise, why we have the police? You know, just let them go home. Why you have windows in your house? Why you have a door? Why you have fence? This is always a protection. This is always protection because the earth is full of evil. If we don't have evil, nobody will put fence in his door. Nobody will install security camera and security alarm. Nobody will have a key for his, his car because nobody will take it. But because this earth is full of evil, so you have to take a measure of security. So carrying a sword is a measure of security, not a measure of aggression. All my life I carry guns. When the last time I killed somebody? When the last time I went in the street and I started shooting people? I never did that. I will never do that. Regardless who they are. Christian, Muslims, Hindu, I will never do that. This is, this is filthy. You carry the gun to protect yourself. So when Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword go and buy one, he is not teaching the Christians to go and kill. He is teaching the Christians, you have the right to defend yourself. I am the same God as the Old Testament. Imagine if Israel has no army. What will happen to the Jews now there? Just for a second. Let us take the, the Israeli weapon from them for just five minutes. What will happen to the state of Israel? Let us say we will take weapon from America. What will happen to America if we don't have weapon? And this again goes to every country in the world. There's people they buy weapon to be the aggressive, the aggression people. And there's people they buy weapon to defend themselves against the aggression. There's a huge difference. There's people who go for war to conquer, to steal, like Erdogan. And there's people who want to defend and live in peace, like the Greek people. When the last time the Greek they attacked Turkey to take land from them? This is their land, actually. Even though it's their land, still they did not go in war against Turkey. When the last time Greece went and sent a warship just to make a fuzz and make noise against Turkey? Never. They want peace. It's Turkey who sent their warship. Why? Because they learned that those are Christians, they are Christians, they don't fight. They don't want to fight. And the Quran told them that. They gave them the wrong idea. But you will see Turkey will never dare do to do so with Russia. Because they learned that the Russian, yes, they are Christians, but if you touch their nose, they will make you shish kebab. When the last time Erdogan, he announced he is going to take Crimea, which is the land of the Tatar. Hmm? Do he dare? Do he dare to say, I want to launch war against Russia? Do he dare to say, I'm going to launch war so we Muslims, we can take a uh, uh, Shishenia? He don't. He don't dare even to fart. So they speak to you based on who you are. If you are a small nation, they try to intimidate you. If you are a powerful one, they sleep. They take a nap. So what we learn from this, that's your power bring peace. Your weakness bring war. When you are powerful, nobody dare to come to you, to fight you. When you are weak, the evil ones are waiting for the weak cow so they can chop her and take pieces. The hyena. We have a hyena, it's a truth. The hyena, they take advantage of the cattle because the cattle is not united. Otherwise, those big cows, they can kill the hyena so easy. Even sheep can kill the hyena so easy. They have horn. See, even God, he gave animals a defense system. Even animals, they have it. So those who say to you their false statement 
that a Christian he should not be armed, should not armed does not mean you are an aggressive aggressive people, you are not a criminal. I am armed. If I see a Muslim in the street, somebody shooting at him, trying to kill him unjustly, I will be happy taking my gun and defending this poor person who is being killed unjustly. This is when the Christians, he carry a gun to protect the one who need protection, not to be a criminal and unjust like Muhammad and Erdogan. So we as a Christians, we should buy weapon. It doesn't matter what country you are. If anyone says to you, don't do that, he is a coward, he is a liar, he is not teaching the biblical. The disciples of Jesus, they carry swords, but they are not criminals. Actually, by carrying the sword, the thief he will not attack you, just by carrying it. I mean, just carrying the sword will make you walk in peace. If they know that this house, you know, Chicago, as an example in America, Chicago is a city for bad citizens from having guns. It is the most ugly city when it's come to crime. Why? Because only criminal can have guns. Good citizen cannot have guns. So what happened? Criminals take over the street. Because by the time you call the police, the criminals will be gone. Nobody will stop them. Here where I live, if a criminal, he have a gun, will everybody have guns? He will be dead in two seconds. All the neighbors have guns. Women have guns. So good luck if you are a thief or a criminal. So weapon does not make you a criminal. Using the weapon in the wrong way make you a criminal. A, cr a criminal can kill people by a car. Like what happened in France, in Spain, in Germany, when a terrorist following Allah and his filthy prophet drive a car, go over the crowd in a Christmas market. He is not having a gun. He is not allowed to buy a gun. He got a car. Criminal can kill. He can kill by your hands. You can kill by your by a stone. Uh, somebody, his name is Zane. He challenged me to debate him. Well, Zane, I don't know. You have a picture of a kid, and your prophet he asked you to fertilize your beard before you talk to someone like me. So try to go and learn from Zach and Nike. Ask him what is the kind of fertilizer he is using for his beard, and then come back to me. You cannot debate me, my friend. My toes can smash your prophet. Who are you? And as long as you want to debate me, you coward. Why you don't call me when I am live in Skype? I want to debate you. 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 If you want to debate me, you call me, donkey. You don't say it. Do it. Your God, Allah, don't dare to call me. I smash Jibreel and Allah every day. I make them falafel and then I give them to the dogs and the dogs vomit. People who love peace, they prepare for war. Do we understand? People who love peace, they prepare for war. For this is the only reason that the enemy will not attack you. He knew that you are ready. If you remember when Muhammad, he attacked tribes, very peaceful tribe. He attacked them when? They are not ready for war. He attacked them. Those people, they are just feeding their animals, you know busy with their life, narrated or narrated the message of Allah, PBUH, this is kind of a chemical which is connected with coronavirus. 
made an attack of Bani al-Mustaliq when they were unaware and he killed the men and he took the women and the children as sex slaves. You see it? Unaware. Did Jesus say go and buy AK-47, Ishaq Ibrahim? I don't know, Ishaq, you sound like a weird person because AK-47 is the sword of that time. Doesn't matter what, it's AK-47 or even airplane. Do countries buy airplanes? Countries are still Christians. So the size of the weapon is depend on the size of the individual. If it's an individual country, the weapon will be different, will be uh, airplanes, tanks. If it's an individual person, it can be a small gun or AK-47. Because as long as the criminal can carry AK-47, well, why you can don't carry? You have to find a weapon equal to the weapon of the criminal at least. So did Jesus say, go and buy an AK-47? Why not? Does it, does it make a difference if it's a small gun, an AK-47? Both they kill and they have, uh, have bullets. <laughs> Very weird people. You know? Sword at that time, it was the AK-47. This is the biggest AK-47 they have at that time. Heavy gun. So, don't be a criminal. Protect the, 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 the needy. Protect the, the weak. Protect the Muslim. Even a Muslim, you protect him. Even the one who is supposed to pray into Allah to kill you. If he is unarmed and he is not doing anything wrong to you, you don't hurt him. This is a Christianity. We don't buy weapon to attack and rape and kill. This is the teaching of Christ. So if anyone who says to you that a Christian should not have weapon, that's not true. You obey the law, you know. I have a license to carry my gun with me wherever, wherever I go. I have a permit from the government to have as many guns as I want, not only a license for one gun. You see here in America, they give you a license, but you can have 10 guns on you, 10, 20. You can fill up your pockets with guns. It is one license, but you can carry as many as you want. Officially, legally. Obey the law. Don't be a criminal. And do what is right to defend yourself. When you carry a gun, you bring security to your house, to your family, and to your neighbors. For me, it's better if my neighbor have a gun and he's a good guy. That will make me feel more comfortable because that's mean a side of my house is protected by a good neighbor who have a gun. When a criminal come, well, by the time the police come, if the guy he will be in a hulunulu. I mean, there is no way the police will be right away in front of your door when you call them. So call the police, but until the police come, you have to protect yourself. Uh, anyway, we are going to go to the other account, Quality of Life. For those who like to join us, uh, I will post the link for you. Give me a second. And there the topic is different from here. But I wanted even like, you know, I mean, I wanted to speak about this topic because I see too many people claim to be Christians, trying to deceive others about what is Jesus saying in the Bible that's uh, go and buy sword and try to say, say metaphorical. <laughs> this is absolutely false. It's not metaphorical. And it's not even logical. Sorry for the sound. It's not even logical to say that a criminal can have a weapon and you cannot. This is the link for those who like to join us in the other account. And we will be live on air very soon. And remember, having weapon is to defend, not to kill. You defend anyone, need defend, even if he is 
your enemy. If your enemy is unarmed, he come to you, read the Bible. If somebody he is unarmed, come to you asking for protection, you protect him. Even if he is your enemy. There's a huge difference between having guns and being a criminal. Guns don't kill. Criminals kill. Have you ever seen a gun walking down the street by himself, by itself, shooting? No. They don't do that. They are just little tool. The same as a hammer, the same as an ox. Either you use it for something good, to put nails in the wood, or to put nails in the hands of some, somebody like Jesus. You can use the same hammer, either to build a house or to torture a human being. Which one you choose to do, it's up to you. We will be live in the quality of life account in a few minutes from now. And this is the account. Please join us, invite your friends. And until I see you then, in a few minutes from now, may the Lord bless you. And remember always, don't let anyone give you misinterpretation of the Bible. False people shall not prevail. The truth will, shut, will, will, will set you free. And ask very simple ask questions. If a man, he come to your house and he want to rape your wife, did Jesus say, pray for him? Is that what Jesus said? Those hypocrites who say to you, Jesus he did not ask you to carry a sword. If a man, he come to their house, want to steal a TV, the TV, not his wife, it will kill the guy for the sake of his TV. The same guy who's saying to you, Jesus come to you, he, says, he did not say by a sword. If you take his phone, he will go crazy. Coward and hypocrites. In fact, a man, imagine a man, he see a woman is being raped. doesn't matter who she, even if she is not his wife, and he do nothing to protect her. He is a coward. He is no Christian. He don't even deserve to be called a man. Actually, he is a rapist himself because he saw a crime and he did not stand against it. What the Bible says in the book of James, the one who sees something is, is sin and he did not fix it. It's sin to see something is sin and you don't fix it. It's a sin. It's a sin to see something wrong and you don't correct it. It is a sin. So you are part of the sin, part of the crime. If you see a rapist raving and you are watching. Why? Because supposedly you are a peaceful Christian. If I see a man raping a woman, well, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, God knows what I will do then, but I will never stand. Maybe he is more powerful, maybe he more strong, but I will never be standing as a coward watching such a crime. Thank you for being here. Join us again in the other channel. And today, today the topic is how we enjoy life while life is full of misery. And one of our misery actually is people who give you false interpretation of the Bible, <laughs> false teaching, false teachers, false uh, uh, politician. I mean, everything around you is for, it's a misery. Watch the TV and you will see the misery all over. Corona, garbage, uh, jobs, money, you know what I mean? How we can enjoy this life with all this stress? If you are interested in the topic, join us in the other channel and until I see you then, may the Lord bless you. And again, this is the account for those who care to join us. Christ is Lord and buy guns not to kill, but to defend yourself. I mean to that. Thank you and God bless you. See you soon.